When you don't have much time to practice, what should you practice? What if you only have half an hour? What if you only have 10 minutes? Can you still make progress? Training is not one size fits all. It has to be tailored to the specific goals and capacities of each individual, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. I think your training should always be as efficient as possible, even when you have hours and hours every day. But when your time is short, efficiency becomes critical. But if you do it right, you can make progress even if you only have 10 minutes a day. Of course, you're going to need a bigger boat. You're going to need a plan so tight it squeaks. You're going to have to prioritize deadlines and commitments, what to leave in, what to leave out. How do you know what to include in your practice? Well, there are three main considerations. First, you want to prioritize things that will make the most difference in your skill in the least amount of time. Now, no matter what your specific skill focus may be, whether it's a beat straight attack or a disengage or post, you will always be working to improve your foundational elements, and that's balance, line, focus, and distance. Second, you want to prioritize correcting and eliminating any critical errors. Now, the most prevalent error in fencing is failure to fully extend the arm before initiating the flight of the lunge. And second would probably be failure to maintain the point in line on the recovery from the lunge. Now, these two things must be 100% correct, reliable, without exception. The correct execution of these skills will be the first things that deteriorate with fatigue, inattention, or ring rust. Third, you want to prioritize key tactical patterns. Now, these are patterns that have broad practical application, things you do most often, things you enjoy doing and are already particularly good at. We call these bread and butter moves. Essential, reliable, and dependable. This is what you count on when things go south. It's your knockout punch. As an old saying, beware the opponent who only knows one move and practices it all the time. Well, here's where quality beats all the hell out of quantity. The fewer things you practice, the more you'll improve each one. Do the math. If you have 30 minutes to practice, should you practice 30 things for one minute each? or one thing for 30 minutes. So you don't have to be able to do everything. You have to be able to do a few things perfectly. One technique mastered is worth a thousand sampled. When you need one touch, what's the move that you can hit anybody with one time? Now, of course, it has to fit your strategic position. And you have to set things up tactically so you can do it. You know, you, you have to do the thing that makes your opponent do the thing that lets you do the thing. If you have one bread and butter move, that's all you need. If you have two or three such moves, you are formidable, daddy-o. When you're planning your practice, there's a couple other things I would suggest you consider. Uh, number one, uh, choose things that you can do on your own. No coach, no partner needed. You don't want your training to depend on somebody else's availability or cooperation. Um, second, choose things that require the least amount of space. Now, you don't need much space. If you have room to advance and lunge, that's plenty. And you can do without the advance. You can even do without the lunge. Choose things that require minimum equipment. You might not be able to carry a sword with you wherever you go. The only really essential equipment is your body, mind, and spirit. Hell, I've practiced with a pencil. Choose things that require the least setup, travel, transition time. You know why most people don't go to the gym? Because they have to go to the gym. You want to spend your training time training, not traveling. The backbone of our practice is the solo etude, 
uh, kata, if you please. Although we do have a kata that is a uh, duet, we created our etudes primarily to satisfy the requirements of solo training. The solo etude is infinitely variable and adaptable to the individual's needs. Practicing to acquire a skill is different from practicing to perform that skill at high levels of physical intensity and emotional arousal. You have to adjust the intensity, duration, and frequency according to your specific goals. Now, when your goal is to acquire a skill, in which I would include with that eliminating critical errors in your skill performance, there's a couple of important things. Number one, practice only when you're fresh. Fatigue is the enemy of skill acquisition. Practice as slowly as possible. Don't correct errors. Avoid making them in the first place. Go so slowly that there are no errors. Practice for a short period of time. Don't practice into fatigue. Practice as frequently as possible. Frequency is better than duration. It's better to practice 10 minutes six days a week than 60 minutes once a week. In skill acquisition or skill correction, focus on articulation, synchronization, and minimization. Articulation, the precisely correct, perfectly controlled movement. Synchronization, the correct vertical and horizontal arrangement of movement between body parts. And in particular, independent but coordinated movement of the hand and the feet. Huh? Minimization, uh, MEM, we call it, stands for Minimum Effective Movement. That's using the least amount of motion, the least amount of energy, and the least possible time with the least possible risk. We express this as the master principle when it is not necessary to act, it is necessary not to act. Now, when your goal is to practice performing the skill at a high level of physical and emotional arousal, practice only skills you have acquired. Do things that you know well. Don't practice new things at this level. Practice at high levels of speed and power. That is, go from stillness to explosive execution. Repeat the skill at high levels of intensity until you can no longer sustain that level of speed and power. Now, if you're going to have to perform your skill in a fatigued state, then train to failure and then do three more. <laughs> you decrease the frequency, allow ample recovery time between training sessions. Your objective will be to perform at maximum capacity, that is, at the highest level of intensity and speed that you can still perform correctly for five to ten seconds at a time. In a fight, <laughs> ten seconds is a long, long time. Uh, unless you're getting counted out. But never, never sacrifice skill for speed. In fact, never sacrifice skill for anything. As a guitar teacher once pointed out to me, it isn't enough to play fast and loud. Uh, you still have to hit the right notes. No matter how long or how short your practice is, no matter what it is you're focusing on, there are two things that are absolutely essential. Mindfulness and joy. Mindfulness means that you are aware and attentive to what you're doing. You're consciously focused. You're not just doing junk repetitions while thinking about what to have for dinner. You're not just phoning it in. You are fully present in the here and now. Joy is the exhilaration of doing the thing you love to do, of doing it with your whole being. It's a sense that you are exactly where you were meant to be, doing exactly what you were meant to do.
and doing it exactly the way it was meant to be done. Mindful and joyful. It doesn't get much better than that.